since 1963, here since 1950, a graduate of North Dakota State, and Charles Finley, a graduate of Southwest Missouri State, at Springfield. Finley, a defensive line coach. Another line coach, a graduate of Central Missouri State of Warrensburg, is Joe Keaton. In the defensive backfield, Bud Mercer, a graduate of the University of Missouri at Columbia and a former All-State football player. And rounding out the coaching staff of the University of Missouri at Rolla, Burr Van Nostrand, a line coach. This is Bill Plenge. He's a new addition to the staff at UMR. He's the physical therapist, and he has brand new facilities. The one you're looking at here is in the new molded purpose building of the University of Missouri at Rolla. The miners moved into its nearly two and a half million dollar structure in spring of 1969. You see three all cop players here in front of you. First string All-American Frank Winfield, strong side guard for the University of Missouri at Rolla and an all-conference selection. A member of the St. Patrick's board with the beard on and all-conference defensive end Larry Oliver. This is Alan Zabarak sitting next to Stout comparing their helmets in 1969. Little All-American candidate split end Larry Oliver. This is the Miners' multipurpose building. It houses three full-size gymnasiums, the center court being used by the Miners when they play their varsity basketball. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and the Miners have gone now into both swimming and wrestling, the civil engineering building at the University of Missouri. The University of Missouri at Rolla was founded in 1870 as the Missouri School of Mines. It's now part of the four-campus system of the University of Missouri system. It has 5,200 students, 5,000 of them are men, and now offers a liberal arts program. These are two student athletes. Talking now to the chairman of the civil engineering department, Dr. Joseph Senning, the physics building at the University of Missouri at Rolla. The true student athlete, and yet something to look forward to when they graduate because graduating from the University of Missouri in 1969 in the spring meant that the average bachelor's degree drew an average starting salary of $786. That's expected to be nearly $1,000 a month by spring of 1970. This is the electrical engineering building on the campus at the University of Missouri at Raleigh. Leone, president of the student council, talks to Leonard Stout, one of the four co-captains of the minors, and the all-conference defensive end whom we'll see play in just a moment. Both of them are engineering management majors and co-eds on the University of Missouri at Rolla campus. While there are 5,200 students, only 200 of them are women. The mechanical engineering department has Dr. Thomas Fawcett as its chairman. UMR graduates more mechanical engineers including one here who will graduate two years hence, Eddie Hanstein, Eddie Lane, Frank Winfield, that Kodak first string All-American choice, and Freddie White, an all-conference defensive halfback. More mechanical engineering graduates from the University of Missouri at Rolla than any other school in the nation. More engineering graduates with bachelor degrees than any other school west of the Mississippi. This is the quadrangle where students, among other things, watch girls. The leaves have left the trees now as Bobby Somerville, the miners starting flanker back, walks across campus. One of the most spectacular displays in America in the fall. Now the University of Missouri at Rolla Miners football season for 1969 against Washington University opens up with the first offensive series. Quarterback Jack Braw faked that handoff and then hit flanker back Bobby Somerville from Chicago. Now this pass goes complete to Larry Oliver and Oliver goes inside the five. From the three with a Miners goal line power set, 205 pound minor fullback Bob Berry carries it on in for the first TD of the season. Minor defense makes the next touchdown. Six times this golden Saturday afternoon, the Golden Horde forced a turnover, and four of those six times, the minor offense scored. This was the first, Dave Williams recovering a bare fumble. 
Quarterback Jack Raw, a Quincy, Illinois product, hits 212-pound tight end Steve McVeigh from the first play from scrimmage, and McVeigh, a sophomore, has his first college TD. Again, it's the defense. Nose man Mike Moore and Dave Williams drop Washington University quarterback Palermo for a loss, and the Miners take over on offense. Jack Raw, the quarterback, used the draw play so much, we called him quick draw draw. Jack Raw pumped just once to set that reception up for Larry Oliver as the split end runs under the ball in the end zone, beating the double coverage he drew all year long. Oliver will kick the point after, and the score, 21 to nothing, UMR. Again, it's the Golden Horde defense. Joe Passantino's number 40, monster man and defensive signal caller. He intercepts and runs it back to the 28. But this time, there'll be no minor score. Instead, there'll be Freddie White blunting the next Washington University drive with a deep interception. The first of eight White intercepts in 1969. And watch the fake bury the fullback goes into the line with Ron Miller on a quarterback keep around the right side. 33 to nothing, minors. Now the final touchdown of the game. Florida freshman Kenny Corona takes a Ron Miller aerial on in for 11 yards in the final score of the game. The Miners 40, Washington University nothing, and John Key, a Rolla High product, nails down the extra point. And now it's September 27th, the Miners' first home game, Missouri Valley. And the defense takes up where it left off in St. Louis. All-conference linebacker Eddie Hanstein, Mexico-Missouri contribution to the Miners, forces a Valley fumble. And defensive tackle Bill Milfelt, son and brother of Little All-Americans, falls on it. Minor football on the 18. The defense welcomes the offense onto the field. They take five plays to move it in for the TD with Barry's great fake into the line, draw to Somerville for the score. And less than three minutes have ticked off the clock as Oliver kicks the extra point. This is draw to McVeigh now. Watch this great Somerville block. That's number 24. Right here, it'll be first and goal, Miners from the five. And for the score, it's Barry who finds daylight to the right side for the TD. 14 to nothing, the University of Missouri at Rolla leads Missouri Valley. And now the Miners show their engineering background. Using a time-tested formula for football, enthusiasm plus pressure equals contact. And here it comes, right here. Well, the book says, draw against the big pass rush. But apparently, Milfelt and Stout and Moore have read that same book. It'll be a loss of five. Now Joe Passantino, number 40, after a big Milfelt rush, gets an interception here. One of 28 engineered by the engineers in just nine games. Here's another now. This one, an interception by all-conference defensive halfback Freddie White. That's called White's Acres over there, and this is why. Freddie brings the crowd to its feet and carries it back to the Valley 23 on a 43-yard interception run back behind a great Lebanon Daryl McAllister block. Then it's Bobby Somerville catching a draw pass and moving on down to the seventh. Now Les Clark for three over the strong side gets down to the Valley four-yard line. And from the four, Barry with his homing instinct burst into the end zone. Draw here under pressure has a screen set up to Les Clark and flares it complete to the Valley 42. But there's no score on this drive. There's still another chance, though. Passantino comes up with another great interception. Number 40 from Kansas City, Joe Passantino. Joe gets a 13-yard return here. Then on the delay, it's Barry from quick draw draw, twisting and churning out 27 yards to the Valley 20. Now it's that same drive. Barry, alone in the left flat, gathers it in and booms on into the end zone. The final score, Miners 33, Valley 14. It's October 4th, New Jackling Field in Rolla, rated by coaches throughout the state as the best football field in Missouri. The Miners win the toss, their drive stalls, and it's a field goal fake. A field goal attempt by Oliver is a fake. The pass goes complete to Clark on the five. It's first and goal, Miners. This will be Les Clark on a strong ice play, but short by just one. And Bobby Berry gets the call for the tough yardage. Now with UMR, third and inches from the Bradley 31. Quarterback Jack Raw shoots the works, and there's that freshman from Miami again. Parada goes in for the touchdown. This is the defense taking its turn. That's Eddie Lane, number 14, two-year-old conference safety, minor interception record holder, and the minors own the pigskin. 
sophomore quarterback Pat Godwin, Cape Girardeau Central is in. He hits flanker Bobby Somerville, first and goal Miners on the five yard line. And from that distance, Clark needs just one crack over the strong side tackle Alan Zabarak for his first touch of the year. The Miners lead it now 21 to nothing. Shades of Fran Tarkenton as Godwin rolls out left and cuts downfield. Watch the great blocking as Godwin will score. And the final will be UMR 42, Bradley 14. The Miners are 4-0 on their way now to five conference games as Oliver kicks the point after. Now it's MIAA time. Under the rain in Warrensburg, the Miners win the toss, receiving the rain and march 70 yards to score the first time they touch the ball. That's the best of it. Les Clark threw the mud from the one. Miners lead. The team picked to win the conference, 7 to nothing, when sure-footed Oliver hits pay dirt squarely between the uprights. After a 26-yard Oliver field goal, it's the defensive unit's turn. The defense forces a fumble here, and Bill Milfeld will be the one to gather it lovingly in. And the defense on a rain-swept CMS field turns it over to the offense, then Clark for seven on a little delay inside the 15-yard line. But the drive stalls for the Miners here, and it's back to the defense as Daryl McAllister, defensive tackle, causes another mule fumble. Miners on the mule 10, and watch Larry Oliver here. He's got triple coverage, three men on him. He has to go to his knees, but he catches a glob of mud, the football, and three tacklers. The Miners lead Central Missouri State 17 to nothing. Watch Leonard stop, all-conference defensive end, as he puts on the pressure. Joe Passantino of Kansas City gets the benefit, his third of seven season interceptions, and goes all the way on in. The first interception of the year against Central Missouri State. And the final score is 24 to nothing, the Miners over the Mules. homecoming in Rolla against the Southeastern Missouri Indians from Cape Girardeau, unbeaten in the last three seasons of conference play. Watch Freddie White. His interception comes on the 35, and behind a fine minor trait all year, great downfield blocking, he goes 65 yards to score, and 10,000 screaming fans come roaring to their feet. This is Oliver, number 44, in motion to the right. Draw gets to tailback Les Clark, and Les rambles 58 yards to the Southeast Missouri State 22. The Indian defense stiffens here, and the Miners settle for Oliver's 37-yard field goal. Ten to nothing, University of Missouri at Rolla. It's still in the first quarter. Again, a minor offensive series now after a Cape punt. The flag goes down as the Miners work from their own seven. Gray fakes his eye back into the line, throws to Somerville on the 40. Now draw pumps again and wings it complete to Larry Oliver on the Cape 28. Note the triple coverage on Larry Oliver. draw on a screen to another Florida freshman, Bobby Ajar. And Bobby squirms to the five as the quarter ends. Now draw slides out right with Oliver flaring to the flag. Watch the Somerville block. Bobby Somerville, number 24, and Larry Oliver goes in to score. The Miners have got a 17 to nothing head start. Freddie White is going to be in residence at White's Acres here. Another interception of a Cape Ariel on the minor 25. Now it's Godwin's turn under center Dennis Smith of St. Louis with Oliver on the receiving end, complete on the Cape 44. But a penalty stalls this drive, and that's Godwin throwing from his own 30, complete to Somerville on the Cape 15, 55 yards in the air. Miners 24, Cape 30. The UMR defense holds. And Godwin is to get another chance. Three straight completions to Somerville. This one in the left flat. The next one, the same receiver, Bobby Somerville, this time in the right flat. And now this third consecutive reception of the third play in a row. This time the left flat complete to Somerville. And now it's Kirksville. And the action started early on an Eddie Lane 90-yard interception return. Watch him. He grabs it on the 10-yard line and goes 90 yards in to score. The minor defense now will have to rise on a great goal line stand. 
There's tremendous interior line play. As they block them from the four-yard line once. And can they rise to the occasion? They do, one more time. They don't get in the score. And for the third time, and for the fourth time, for our four times inside the five-yard line as the defense refuses to let Kirksville score. This will be quarterback Pat Godwin for the Miners, scrambling now. He pumps, turns to his right, and watch this downfield blocking. Touchdown. Ooh, the hard way. And here's a final catch by Les Clark coming out of the backfield as the clock runs out. He stretches all the way out and just hangs on to the ball. Away again now, Maryville. This time on a sunny Saturday in Northwest Missouri, another conference game. The Miners get out early. As Godwin starts it off from the 15, Barry gathers it in and moves to inside the 35-yard line. Now it's from the six-yard line. Godwin calls his own number, and Godwin rolls around left end behind Les Clark's blocking, and Pat Godwin scores. This time it's Godwin on a little swing screen pass to Clark, and Les booms on down to the 10-yard line. That's Godwin to Oliver, complete for the touchdown just before the half. Miners 14, Maryville nothing, and second half coming. But first, a look at a great defensive hit by Dave Williams. Right here. We're in the second half, an all-conference defensive end, Leonard Stout from Kansas, forces a hurried throw here, and there's another UMR interception by Eddie Lane, who directs traffic and takes it back to midfield. That's the first of three Lane interceptions in the final quarter. And those interceptions are not accidents. Watch what double coverage does here with another theft down on the Miners 28, a tremendous catch the second from Eddie Lane. And Bill Milfeld serves a little of his own notice on the Maryville quarterback here. This is still another minor interception in the end zone, again by Eddie Lane of Fredericktown, Missouri. This is a thundering hit by Dave Williams, right here. And that's number 40, Joe Passantino, with the interception back inside the 20-yard line. And the final score is minors 21, Maryville 8. It'll be Springfield at home again. The Miners in their final game of 1969 as Daryl McAllister blocks a quick kick attempt. And Mike Moore of Greenfield, Missouri, falls on it in the end zone for a minor score. Here's the point after by Oliver. And with shocking suddenness, the Miners lead Springfield 7 to nothing. Eddie Hanstein gets the first of two interceptions from his linebacker slot. This one, he runs back inside the bare 20. Then from the SMS one-yard line, Barry rams it on home. Oliver, who can kick with either foot, chooses the right one and kicks it squarely between them. Now Freddie White, he's number 42, intercepts. The Miners are on their own one. Freddie barely gets it back inside, and instead of being on the 20, they're on the one. After the quarter break, Barry caps a long drive, going right up the throat on a quick hit. Touchdown, University of Missouri at Rolla. 21 to nothing, UMR. Godwin and all the time in the world to let Oliver lope into the end zone for the score as Larry makes it 28 to nothing. The University of Missouri of Rolla in a stampede over the Bears from Southwest Missouri State of Springfield. Oliver on the point out. This time a delay. This will be Barry off the weak side going inside the 30. But the drive stalls here. SMS takes over. Another interception by Lane, a spectacular one-handed catch to the SMS 32. Now with Jack Gore calling signals, the handoff to fullback Jim Chapman, freshman from Neosho, Missouri, on down to the 22-yard line. And then the brother of Chicago Bears starting center, Mike Pyle, Harlan at end, takes it in on the 10-yard line. Here's where Barry gets his third score of the day. And the Miners with the Bears, 45 to 12. The Miners give Outstanding Defensive and Offensive Hit of the Week's award. And Bill Milfeld flings quarterback Palermo helmet over Axel as the Miner bench comes to their feet to give him a warm response. Palermo 
is the recipient again, but Ed Hanstein is the dealer this time as the linebacker. Reminds Palermo to bring more blockers with him next time. Now here, watch just behind the ball carrier in this next scene as Milfeld blasts an onrushing would-be tackler so hard his helmet flies off. Well, that's 1969 for you. Seven and two for the Miners, eight seniors gone, and an All-American name. The best year for the Miners since they joined the MIAA conference in 1935, and they say until 1970.